Folks, we did it. Episode 332 of TRDQ. Now, the number 332 is a bit of a special number for Transformers fans. Well, I mean, like, some Transformers fans of a certain age, sure, like, and, and also just in the UK. <clears throat> it's all because the beloved Transformers Marvel UK comic ran for that exact number of issues, running from 1984 to 1991, and I would highly recommend watching the basics episode on the Marvel comics if it's something you want to delve deeper into. I know my dad would appreciate it. I mentioned the comic, even though we're here to look at the annual, because this was the first annual to contain zero new comic strips, just reprints from the UK comic. Now, that might have been a little bit disappointing to the rubes of 1991, but for us, it's a chance to relive some incredible Transformers action. I should say, while we're on the topic, I have so much love for the Marvel UK comic, from the tone of the editorials, the original stories that weren't part of the mainline US comic, the letters page, the backup strips like Action Force, Visionaries and Iron Man, additional comics like Combat Colin and Robo Capers, and the ads that ran through the entire run are a real time capsule in themselves. There always seemed to be a lot of Weetabix going on. It's always a good time reading through an old issue of the Marvel UK comics, so if you see some in the wild, definitely snap them up. Okay, now enough gushing about comics from 40 years ago. Let's look at an annual from 33 years ago. The 1991 Transformers Annual by Marvel Comics. Our cover is fairly action-packed. Hey, it's a Jeff Senior classic with Jazz, Wheeljack and Ironhide attacking what I can only imagine is something standing directly behind me. We can see this annual was priced by Toys R Us at the reasonable price of 99 pence, although the existence of a second sticker underneath suggested it had been stinking up the shelves for quite some time. Inside is a beautifully rendered Jeff Anderson double pager with a line of Autobots seemingly representing the Netherlands, going up against a row of Decepticons showing up for the trans community. The next page I absolutely adore. Look what can happen if you don't safeguard your annual. Imagine reading that as a child, you could end up looking like this if you don't personalise your precious copy of this wonderful Transformers annual. Fuck's sake. We get a contents page and an intro page, and it's clear that the wonderfully named designer, Jackie Papp, had a hard time making it seem like there was more going on than there was, so they papped in about 15 Autobot logos. Next is a reprint of a fan favourite with part one of Fallen Angel, with Jeff Senior really proving why he's the best of all time. So many iconic images burn directly into my skull, especially this. I won't go into the story itself because it's all time travel nonsense. I love it, but it will do you no favours to hear about it. But seeing Galvatron go bananas is such good fun. Nobody draws Unicron like Jeff Senior. We do get some post the Transformers the movie time travel shenanigans, and look how composed Galvatron is after being thrown straight out of Unicron's thigh. Speaking of thighs, look at this, wowie. Such a great story. We get to see Perceptor in his tank mode taking shots at Galvatron, who battles the Autobots until Blaster hits him with high frequency sonics. And what does that do? Yep, it strips away Galvatron's sanity, making him more dangerous than ever. And luckily, there's some help on the horizon, in the form of the Dinobots. Yes! A break in the action now for a bio on Inferno, who had a bit of a change in job description around this time. He was in the Wreckers and then became part of the Survivors and now he splits his time between them and Earth Force. I should say also, Earth Force is great. I've got it as part of these little black and white digests that cover the Autobots adventures in Northern Canada and beyond. And I love these little books and especially in Earth Force, there's a lighthearted tone that's such a nice change from the moodiness and bleak outlook we sometimes got in the UK book. But back to the annual, because I have a treat for you. That's right, a long prose story. The Magnificent Six is a pretty heavy tale, truth be told. We've got some lovely Staz artwork, and look, one of the Autobots is fated to die. Will it be fan favourite Jazz, Prowl, Sunstreaker, Wheeljack, Inferno, or, uh, or Stampede, someone we haven't seen before or since? Uh, there's some nice artwork, and the story revolves around the aforementioned Autobots being unwilling participants in a mission that returns them to the site where they lost their buddy Stampede. However, your day will be brightened by the inclusion of Decepticon maniac Megadeth. Look at the absolute state of them, folks. Ridiculous. But at least we have Thunderwing in the back there keeping it classy. Megadeth wants to set off a ton of nukes, and the Autobots have to stop them. But can they reconcile the memory of Megadeth killing their old pal? Well, part one ends with them being ambushed and Megadeth saying, Welcome to hell. Digga 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 de de de. A break in the action, folks, with the Asteroid Association Guide to the Life Forms of the Galaxy, rating them all in terms of risk. There's some nice images of various spacecraft we've seen in previous adventures, a bit about them, and a rating. Autobots are the friendliest, Mechanibals are the official bad bastards of space. 
Fallen Angel Part 2 kicks off in style. Although I've never been a huge Jeff Anderson fan, this is an undeniably cool splash page. Tons of action as Galvatron takes on the Dinobots, with Shockwave and his Decepticons looking on, waiting to see who gets the upper hand. Now I won't go into it, but there's a lot of wild stuff going on with mind control and whatnot, so when Swoop turns the tide, the Decepticons fire on Galvatron, who very comedically just runs away. The Decepticons then warn Swoop that they're cool today, but next time he's getting his head kicked in ominous stuff. Another bio for Earth Force warrior Ironhide, and there he is squatting behind a big pine tree. The Magnificent Six wraps up, and honestly it's so dark, but at least we get a full body shot of both Megadeth and Stampede, that's something for you fan artists out there, or fannies as I like to call you, but suffice it to say, Megadeth gets battered, and Jazz muses that after the horrors they've seen, there may be six of them, but Magnificent they are not. Whew. Three bios for Earth Force pals, Jazz, Sunstreaker and Prowl, and I must say I do like the strong block colours they've used here. Good on them! The final story is Firebug, which involves a little impish pain in the arse causing bother. Here, this isn't you, is it? How, how dare you? Oh, okay, right, hey, just asking. It's nice to see the Autobots doing more rescue work, saving humans, etc. They take on the robotic Firebug going back and forth until Inferno douses it, snuffing out its flame momentarily. They consider what to do with the thing, Inferno worryingly have to remind everyone that they're not murderers. But there's a rather sweet conclusion where they exile the Firebug to Mercury, where they can prance around in the flames forever. Isn't that nice and a little bit sad? Whoa, 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 Wheeljack's bio is the last piece of content in this book, which is about as exciting as it sounds. We end the book on the same inside cover and the back cover as you'd expect. Now, despite the reprints, this is a very solid entry as an annual. I wish there was some original comic in there, but what we get is really decent fun, especially Fallen Angel. Okay, okay, next video is going to be something you actually care about, okay? Big changes are coming to TRDQ, so hold on to your dorsal fins. Okay, folks, bye.